Hope he's not a pitcher. Hi, this is Joe Pete. We're the Kent State Educational Channel 29. We're here at Cedar Quest Park for today's celebration of 50 years. Can you imagine that? 50 years, the Asheville Little League. Can you imagine the number of players that have come through this system in 50 years? This is great. We've got some of the original founding fathers like Chico Dascoli, Bobby Prashano, Pat Sheldon, and they're on hand, Red Matthews, and a, and a group of guys that run the first all-star team, I believe it was back in 1951. We just had a beautiful parade, and there's, the fans are here everywhere, there's kids everywhere, and these people are, are, we're honoring today after 50 years because they've made Asheville Little League what it is today, a great place to have fun and for the whole family and everyone. So let's, hopefully we're gonna get a chance to talk to some people here today, and let's have a good day, and hopefully I'm gonna be able to get somebody to buy me a bag of popcorn. Good morning. On behalf of Ashtabula Little League, I'd like to welcome everyone here and thank you for participating in our 50th anniversary celebration. To start off, we will have the flag raising and the national anthem. The national anthem will be sung by Mike Reif and will be accompanied by the Ashtabula Panther Band. founding board members and initial players in Little League. Starting in no particular order, we have Mr. John Altman, original player on the Indians. John Chico Dascoli, original coach and umpire, head umpire in chief for 22 years down here. Mr. Jim Bordeaux, a player on the Dodgers. Mr. Bob Peterman, a player on the Yankees. Mr. Red Matthews, board member one of the founders of Little League and who field directly behind me is named after. Our city manager and initial player down here, Mr. Augie Pugliese, the player on the Indians. Mr. Pat Sheldon, original league secretary and one of the founders. He set up our charter with the state of Ohio for us. Mr. Bob Presciano, a manager and another founder of Little League. Mr. Earl Capitina, the original equipment buyer and a manager for nine years. Mel Carpenter, a player on the Dodgers, and someone else who's done a lot of work on the field down here. Mr. Jack Leonard, a player on the Indians. Mr.
Mr. Tony Martino from the Tigers. Lenny Marcello from the Dodgers. Ken Kovac from the Yankees. Mr. Ron Orlando from the Yankees. Uh, Mr. Joe Presciano, a board member and president of Little League for several years. Mr. E.J. Colon from the Phillies. And Mr. Ben Janelle from the Yankees. These people were instrumental in getting the Little League started. And also out there is Mr. Tony Tolino, who is our district administrator. He wasn't an original player. He came a year later, I think. At this time, I'd like to introduce also the board members of Ashtabula Little League. The chairman and the American League president is Mr. Lou Smith. Vice chair is Kathy Cray. Secretary, Erica Elliott. No. I think it's not. Because I'm supposed to introduce the district administrator again. So Tony Polino, district administrator, District 1, Ashtabula Little League. Treasurer and public address announcer, Bob Beacom. Yeah. Chief umpire and Big Lane's Boys president is Dave Furman. He's umpiring the game. Uh, National League president and player agent, George Toth. The American League major boys vice president is John Wyman. The National League Major Boys Vice President, Bill Izzy. American League Minor Boys Vice President, Kevin Aserno. National League Minor Boys Vice President, Mike DiDominic. Seven-year-old Vice President, Tim Consul. Uh, Executive Vice President of Girls Softball and Junior League Vice President Dave Jones. Minor Girls Vice President Rhonda Arkman. Board Member Debbie Lines. Luann Izzy. John Cray, without a shirt, and Mike Ernst, who is Major Girl Softball. Those are the board members for the current season.
over here. What would that feel like throwing out that first pitch? Well, not like you did 50 years ago. You hit the first home run. Yes, I did. Do you remember about that? Tell us about that. Yes, I uh, I don't know what the score was in the game, but I remember hitting the first home run, right center field fence, and I hit uh, Ken Kovacs' dad's car, Steve Kovacs, and dented the roof. So that, that, yeah. Talk about the memories that you have. What, what's, what's some of the best memories you have back then? Well, that was the getting organized and getting to meet children from all over the uh, city, uh, which we never had the opportunity to do before, and uh, being organized. Before that, there was just uh, pickup teams and stuff, but this was the first organized baseball in the city of Asheville for little children, you know. And that's about the thing that I remember the most. Well, congratulations. I'm sure you're going to remember that first pitch for a long time. Well, thank you. Have a good day. Pleased to have with us honored guest today, uh, City Manager Augie Puglis. Augie, you were involved down here when this all ha happened. Talk about your memories. Yes, well, uh, 50 years ago, approximately, right about now, uh, I was involved in the Asheville Little League when it first started. And the first field was the field that is just behind us here. And uh, I can remember that the there were still roots from the trees that were still sticking out of the field. So that's how new the field was. Uh, the first year we sat on railroad ties that were painted green. And every one of us on the Indians, and the, I can't remember the team we were playing, had green paint all over our pants. So we were all worried how we were going to get it off. But that was one of the, was one of the memorable moments of the first year in Little League. Today we had this nice parade here in downtown on Main Avenue. Uh, Main Avenue is starting to come together. We have all these people come down to Cedar Quest Park. Isn't this a great day for the community today? It sure is. This is, this just shows you but how many things we could have in Asheville and what the benefit it shows. We had approximately 900 boys and girls involved in this down here, and this is something that I believe every child, boy or girl, should be involved in and, and would really enjoy it and do something for their life. <laughs> I'm here at Asheville Little League, and we just got done with a beautiful ceremony, and I'm happy to have with us two of our founding fathers. They're two of the heaviest hitters in Asheville. On my left is Chico, John Dascoli, and Bobby Prashano. Uh, both these guys were original founding fathers of Cedar Quest Park. Uh, Chico, talk about what went into this project. Well, when we first started, it was a big, big thing. Everybody was behind us, especially the people of Ashtabula. The first thing we did was, uh, this was a three-seat camp at one time. So they gave it, uh, Ashtabella Township Park, they donated this to us for $1 a year for 99 years. So we had some of the founding fathers come down here and we started the field there. That was our first field. Our first field was a snow fence and two telephone poles for bleachers, uh, for, for uh, seats. Uh, we had six teams when we first started. And... Uh, the next year, they, they made, it, made it to 12, but uh, but uh, we had some bad times and some good times. But the whole project was the people from Ashton Miller was right behind it 100%. Bob, you had a lot of help from the community to get this project started. Talk about some of the people that helped out oh, uh, getting Little League started. Definitely, we had a lot of donations, and they they supplied us with all the material that made this what we got today possible. Well, I, I know we had some uh, construction people with their heavy equipment come down here, some trucking firms come down and haul dirt into it, and uh, the lumber companies donated us uh, uh, lumber for the fence, the, uh, the railroad gave us the post, CEI dug the holes for the post, uh, and it was just 100% community effort. And here we are today with the, with the parade and the, and the festivities and Ron Orlando throwing out the first pitch. What's this all mean to you today? Oh, it's great. It's great to see that uh, the provided uh, activity for the young generation. 
And, and, and Chico, these guys did a lot of hard work here. You got to give credit to Asheville literally today Asheville for, for inviting you guys down here and having this ceremony. A lot of hard work went into today. They're doing what a do great job, and I'm, I'm very proud of them because they're 100% behind Little League, and they did a marvelous job. And it's all about, you know, today's young young kids having a chance to come down here that's and play right. ball, and that's what you guys did, that's didn't you? That's what it did. It keeps them off the street, and it makes friendship from years to year. You see, we were together. That's the first time maybe we saw each other in 40 years, and they remembered us and they saw said looky here we are together again in right. one big happy family and it was great my heart just shuddered when i seen all them boys again well guys thanks for your time today and congratulations on a job well done hey you guys a second does anybody have any popcorn does anybody find any popcorn does anybody have any popcorn you guys don't have any popcorn Nobody has any popcorn. You guys can't help me? What kind of, I gotta, I gotta have some popcorn. Nobody will buy me any popcorn? I'm here with Ben Janelle of the uh, 1951 Yankees, was it? Right, Yankees. And, and you were on the tournament team. Talk about we're that. We were champ championship team that year, the Yankees, and the uh, tournament team I didn't get on, but I was Yankees champion. And you came from California California, today. here for the 50, the 50 years. So obviously this meant something to you to come sure, back for this. Sure did, it meant a lot. Talk about your fondest memory. Oh, there was many fond memories that first year, and uh, it, was a, it was a tough season for us, to, but we won the championship. Uh, Ronnie Orlando was a great center fielder pitcher on our team, Kenny Kovacs. Bob Peterman was a real good pitcher. I mean, we had a real good team that year. What would you think of the parade today? It was excellent, excellent. Great that they could do this for 50 years in Rashad Villa. <laughs> current Asheville Little League treasurer, Bob Beacom, also our master of ceremonies today. You had a couple one-liners today. Yeah, it was pretty good down here, Joe. We had a great day for it. So. Talk about, you know, you've been down here for how many years now? I've been a manager on the board for 25 years, Joe. I even managed when you were playing down That's here. That's right, I remember you, that. You, you were a good opponent. And we, we loved it when you pitched. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bob, a lot of work went in today's ceremony, and, and honoring these guys was a lot of class on Asheville Little League's part. Talk about the work that went in today. Well, a lot of people spent a lot of time planning this, Joe, and I can't even begin to mention all the names. Uh, some of the old-timers were in on the planning. Our current board was in on the planning. There was just a lot of people involved, which is good for the city of Ashtabula, and it's good for our youth in this area. I and, think, also, so. and also, being a city councilman, it's good to see the city manager down here with the proclamation. So many people down here. It's just a great day for Ashtabula. Yeah, you hear all the bad things about the city, and this is this is some of the good things we do here. So and we're, we're glad that you people could come down here and cover it for us. We really appreciate that. So. Congratulations, Bob. Thanks, Have a good Joe. day. I'm pleased to have with us Earl Capitina and Joe Prashano. We're here down at Asheville Cedar Quest Park. Uh, Joe, you were the first president of Asheville Little League. Talk about that. Well, I wasn't the first president. I came along a few years later. Okay, I thought I read that you were the first president. No, I wasn't. Uh, uh, I actually started out uh, as uh, coaching, managing, and then I was a vice president, and then president, and I was on the board. And that also included a maintenance man down here, with, and we put in quite a few hours doing all of that. And uh, that was in the 60s. How about some memories for, from you uh, back then? Tell me some fond memories that you might have had. Well, my, my fondest memories is uh, the seeing these youngsters develop into pretty good ball players, and then later on they went in to play uh, in a higher classification of baseball. And Earl Capitina, you were uh, you were one of the all stars down here. No, I was just the manager. Okay, you were manager, manager, and a purchasing and, agent. And what team? While. What team were you the manager of? Uh, the Phillies and the Cincinnati Reds and the major, and the seniors. Talk about some of some of the memories that you have and some of the players that you coach that you see today still walking oh, around. Oh yeah, um, we had a lot of good players. Uh, Mike Cincerelli. Joe Greeny, uh, <laughs> names are hard to come by. When you guys, but, when you guys were managers, did you guys sit around a room and have a big draft every year? Is that the way things got started? Yes, the, we, they'd have a tryout, and the players would play. They would throw the ball, they would hit, they would field, and you picked the players that you would like could get. We tried to pick the best ones all the time, but 
you sometimes you you know you get what you what you was able to get. And back in your era, you guys had a lot of people down here donating a lot of time, and Definitely. it took a lot of effort, and the community got together. Talk a little bit about that. You never got anything for this. It was just no, it, it just, just made you feel. Good. We had nine made years down good. there. We used to we used to groom the fields, uh, used to cut the grass. Uh, keep the kids all together. The women helped uh, have picnics and parties. It was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. We had, uh, one of the biggest things was the mothers would play the boys at their positions. And that was one of the biggest fun things of the year. That and it was very good. And today we look down at Cedar Quest Park and we have all these fields and all these people down here today. What's that mean to you? I mean, well, isn't this great? It's great. I, I, I've been away for a few years, quite a few years. And now I come back and I see much, much improvement. It's uh, quite an ordeal, yes. Well, I'm here with Joe Fasciano and Erdo Cavatina. Thanks for your time, guys, and congratulations today. Well, I spent some time in the mudfield night Watching it from the bench You know I took some lumps when the mighty case struck out So say, hey, Willie, tell the cow And Joe DiMaggio Don't say it ain't so You know the time is now Oh, put me in the cold I'm ready to play today Put me in the cold I'm ready to play today Look at me I can be Santa Field I'm pleased to have with us Corey Herpy of the is the Major League Phillies. Yeah. And talk about uh, your team this year. Um, they're doing better than they were last year, and we're gonna face the Tigers on Tuesday, and hopefully we'll win. And what position do you play? Pitcher in first base. And who's your favorite baseball player in the Major League today? King Griffey Jr. And why? Because he's um. All He's one of the top players. I want you to think about something. I want you to think about 50 years of Asheville Little League. We had some gentlemen here today that were honored at the ceremony today that started Little League. What do you think about that? Um, it's nice to see the people who started this, and it keeps people off drugs and occupied. Well, good luck to you this year, Corey. Thanks. <laughs> Pat Sheldon is one of the founding fathers of Asheville Little League. That goes back 50 years, Pat. Talk about that a little bit. Talk about some of the things that you guys had to do to get this successful. The, the, the organization really started with the Rotary Club, and E.R. Cedarquist was a member of the Rotary Club. Uh, and as such, he's, he was the inspiring force that not only got the money to get started, but he physically put in all of the time necessary to get that field that's over on my right and behind me uh, actually started. And it was really a wonderful experience because it brought the community together. Uh, up until that time, people from the harbor were strangers. I never knew anybody from uh, Sweet Town in East Ashtabula. But the Little League brought everybody, brought the community together, got the people together. It was really a wonderful experience for all of us. Pat, you, you know, this field's named Cedar Quest Park. Everybody knows that's what the name, but really a lot of people don't know Mr. Cedar Quest and what he was about. Talk a little about, about well, him and what he did for this Okay, Amos project. Cedar Quest was an old man when I knew him uh, at that time, back in 1949 and 50. Uh, and as such, uh, he, had, uh, he had a couple of daughters, but he had no sons. Uh, he, he lived down. Uh, he lived down at a country club. Uh, didn't play any golf, but he was a farmer. He really liked. He liked to work with his hands. He liked to work with the, uh, with bushes and trees. And he came down here and he looked at this place and he said, "What a great place for a park right in the middle of town." And he's the one, really. He was a. He was a master jeweler. They talk about master plumbers, master carpenters, uh, master electricians. He was a master jeweler from the old school. He did all of his own engraving. He did. He never sent anything out. Uh, 
he was he was known in Ashtabula uh, as Mr. Reliable. Uh, he was competent. He did a great job. And one last question. I heard Mr. Beacom mention that you wrote the charter for the first Little League. Talk, talk about that a little bit and how much work that entailed. Uh, well, it really wasn't too much work in drafting the charter because we just we wrote the charter, uh, sent the charter to the Secretary of State, got it approved. We were incorporated and we were in business. And it was fun. It was a great experience. Well, thanks a lot for your time today, Thank Pat. You. Have a good day. It. Thank you. Thank you. We're back here at Cedar Quest Park. I'm pleased to have with us another living legend in Ashtabula, Red Matthews. Red Matthews is one of the founding fathers of Ashtabula Little League. We had a good day today, didn't we? Right, real good day. So everything but the win. I tell you, I tell you, Red, we, we've been together now for a few years. We know each other, got to know each other. And I always wondered when I played here at this, I played here at this field over here on my right. It's called Matthews Field. And then later on, I got to think, you know, who's this Matthews? It's you, isn't it? This field's named after you, Red Matthews Field. How did that come about and talk about it a little bit? Well, I uh, done a lot of work down there. I was groundkeeper for 10 years. I rebuilt uh, the old major league field, the old minor league field, the senior league field, built Nappy Field from scratch for less than $1,000. And in appreciation, they named this field after me. You know, a lot of hard work and a lot of help from a lot of people. Talk about the community support that you guys got at that time. Well, we got a lot of help from the railroad. My boss told me several times, I wish he'd quit Little League before we both get fired. <laughs> <laughs> they used to beg, borrow, and steal for Little League. A lot of people thought I got paid, but I never got a dime. You have to love kids. and in order to do it. No question about that. That's what it's all about, is helping the kids in, in, in our society today. And this Little League gives them an opportunity to come down here and play some ball, and it gives the parents something to do. Right. Look at today. Look at here we are today. Look at this beautiful pavilion that they have here. Right. And this thing has come a long way since you guys started, hasn't it? Right, it's come a long way. <laughs> I'm here with a guy that uh, managed back at Asheville Little League when I played in the major leagues, Lou Smith. Lou, you're the president of Asheville Little League right now? Yeah, I'm the chairman of the board and also the American League president. And, and 50 years of Asheville Little League, it's amazing. How many years have you put in down here? Mm, 24, 25. And talk a little bit about some of your memories that you've had over the years. Oh, it's just unbelievable. The, the, the fondest memory I have is the team that went to the World Series in 1997. That's uh, the most... Uh, that's the fondest one. That was the greatest one. I saw all 22 games they won that year, and it was great. And we got a chance to talk to the manager, uh, Tony Prashano, today about that team and what a run it was. And you were really involved with that. You, you followed them the whole step of the way, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I, I saw every one of their games. Um, the other, other memories I have now, I'm starting to see children, the kids I coached back 20-some years ago bringing their kids down here now. That's really, they come up to me and say, you don't remember me, do you? And those, those are the kind of things I'm getting now and that's that's really shocking to, to say wow Did, was there a time when i got to bat in the ball a little bit down here sure i remember that mm -hmm. lou we had a great celebration here today it was a class act for you guys to bring down some of these founding members of 50 years of Asheville little league um you guys did a good job. How much work went into today's event? Oh, it was a lot of work. It was almost a year-long planning of the celebration. It was just, and we, you know, we have to apologize to people because people didn't come forward. You know, there's, there's, there's lots of. We found out history that we had no idea about. You know, the older stuff. But there's a lot of past history in the last 10 years or so that nobody talked about. Nobody brought anything forward, so we had no information for the program and that kind of thing. But. We had, an, we had a nice turnout of, oh, yeah. uh, of some of the old timers that put a lot of time and hard work here yeah. and it seemed like they really enjoyed themselves today. Oh yeah, they had a great time. Every one of them, every one of them came up and told me how, what a nice job that we did and they really enjoyed it and they were happy and pleased with it. And... Pleased to have with us a guy that's been down at Asheville Little League for many, many years, Tony Tolino. Tony, you're district administrator at District One. That's uh, you oversee 15 little league, little leagues. But you know, you spent most of your time down here. Yes, Joe. Most. 
Go ahead. Most of my time was spent here. I started coaching here 1963 uh, on the Little League Tigers with a gentleman named John Eckenston and Lenny Milano. And that's how I got my start. I've been at it ever since. And you've been, you've done, you've worn many hats down here, including umpire in chief for many years. And you've, you've raised a lot of umpires, including myself down here. Talk a little bit about the umpire. Well, <clears throat> uh, back in 1976, we started, uh, Dave Fortney, myself, and John Patterson started a Little League Umpires Clinic. And that clinic has been running since 76 up until last year when we didn't have anybody sign up, so we didn't do it anymore. So we've, We've trained a lot of people, Joe. Uh, I'll tell you what, I, from my experience as, as a Little League umpire, I learned from Mr. Tolino, um, it was a good summer job. It kept us off the streets, and, and, and that helped a lot of kids down here, didn't it? Yes, we had uh, yourself, Barry Northrup, Floyd Tackett, uh, Liv Vitale, uh, just to name a few that started at the young age. My own sons, uh, Todd, Tony, Terry, they all, uh, Troy, they all started at 12, 13 years old. And we never paid a lot of money here, but it was always enough to give, to give you guys some spending money for the summertime. Right, and, and you think about Asheville Little League, you think about 50 years, some of these guys that came down here today that were honored, it's amazing, you know, it, isn't it great to see some of these guys come back down here? Yes, it is. It's amazing because I was part of that. A lot of people <laughs> I, come down here and they bring their kids and play, and, and pretty much that's what they do. They bring their kids down here, they come and watch and play, but you know, behind the scenes, there's so much hard work that goes into keeping this facility running over the years, and you can attest to that, can't you? Yes, Joel. Uh, does, it does take a lot of hard work, but over the over the years and since my involvement, we've always had some good, dedicated people. Uh, up until right now, they, they have an excellent group here that uh, look at this facility. It's come a long way since we used to have uh, wood si sideline fences, wood outfield fences to all chain link, and uh, the fields are just uh, immaculate. You know, they're just good with all new aluminum bleachers, and they work hard. They really work hard, and there's, there's a lot of people. You you can't single out any one person because if you do you're going to miss out somebody uh, there's been a lot of people over my 38 years at this that have donated and volunteered a lot of hard work blood sweat and tears <laughs> Pleased to have with us uh, Anthony Prashano. Mr. Prashano has the great distinction of 50 years of Asheville Little League to have managed the only team, the only team out of all the teams in 50 years, the tournament team that's made it to the Little League World Series. And that is one heck of an accomplishment. Uh, Tony, talk about your team. And, 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 and I know, it's, what year was that? 1997. Talk about what, talk about your team a little bit. Well, this was an exceptional summer. It was an amazing group of kids that come around just every once in a while. Uh, we had everything. We had pitching. We had defense. We had hitters. We had home run hitters. We had arms. It was just a team that that they grew up together. They played together for a long time. And when we got to be 13-year-olds, they they did what they had to do to get to the World Series. And speaking of the 13-year-olds, most of those kids now are in high school. Let's talk about some of those kids that are, were on that team. Well, well, most of them kids are that I had, about 10 or 11 of them were from Harbor, which right now are playing for Harbor, most of them. And that's probably why Harbor is undefeated in the NEC. Uh, a couple of them were from Edgewood, a couple of them were from Ashabilla. They were just, you know, most of them were all playing. They were just a great group of kids. How many games did you guys have to win to actually get to the Little League World Series? People don't understand how hard, how hard it was to do that. Well, we had to win the district here. First we won, it was five games, we undefeated played here, then we went on to Dayton, and we had to win five there. To get to Dayton, we had to win five more, and we went to Fort Wayne, Indiana. And basically it was the same. You play five games. If you're undefeated while you're gone, then we got to Taylor, Michigan to get the World Series. And I'll tell you, it was just like being a pro athlete. You pack up, you go down to Dayton, you play your, you play your three, four games for a week, and then you come home and rest for a week, you pack, for one more day and you go on to the next city. It was, and I, and I remember that the community really came around to support you guys and it was in the paper every day and they were taking donations to try to help, you know, defray some of the expenses. Talk about that a little bit. Well, we had some great parents, uh, Bob Cato, Wayne Umholtz. Uh, they went out and raised money. Uh, the kids were just, it was just unbelievable. Once we got to World Series, it was like the Olympics. Everything was free. They had parties for them. They had, the food was free. The hotels was free. We, we rented uh, putt-putt places and golf, uh, uh, go-karts, 
We took over the whole track. It was just amazing summer that you'd have to be there to really uh, experience what it was all about. It was an amazing time and an amazing run for Asheville Little League, the only team in the history to make it to the Little League World Series. You know, I have a lot of memories of Asheville Little League. I started playing here in the minor leagues, worked myself up through the majors, and I, I was a member of the tournament team, and it was coached by uh, Mr. Nelson at that time. And we had a really good team. We had a really good team that year. And I remember John DiDonato was a good pitcher. Hey, I heard you were on hard times, Joe, so I bought you a bag of popcorn, buddy. Finally, somebody bought me a bag of popcorn. Thank you, George Dragon. <laughs> well, wrapping up today's festivities here at Asheville Little League, we had a really good day, a nice parade, a good ceremony. We honored some of the founding fathers of Asheville Little League's 50th year celebration, like Bobby Frasciano, Chico Dascoli, and Pat Sheldon. And it was a great day, and the Asheville Little League did a good job. Congratulations, everybody, and we'll see you later. Even go I'm not there. <laughs>